Hello everyone, welcome to American Truck Simulator. Just started a new profile here. I'm gonna do a career off of this and uh, just take it all the way as far as you can go. And I really don't think there is a, a finish here. There is a, I don't think there's a game over. Uh, you purchase your truck, make the company, and then you just continue to build trucks after trucks and uh, hire more employees and until you're a dominant force uh, on the game here. So I've already done one run and it was just basically I accidentally clicked on the tutorial. The game had crashed on me because I loaded mods a little too soon and it kicked me over to, to the tutorial so I had those help boxes popping up everywhere so I did one quick run to Truckee and I am based out of Sacramento. I figure that's going to be a nice spot. I can just work my way south through California. But I already discovered Truckee. I imagine uh, that email is going to be the Reno Peterbilt. <laughs> and let's see here. Yep. So now Reno, once I travel there, will be on the map for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Some of the mods I have in here, one of them is the Pete 389. The price, yeah, that is a little low, 50900 That's not quite right. That thing should be in this range here at $170,000 range. Um, of course, the day cap does get a little lower in price as well. Uh, I do have... I have not driven this one yet. I just added this one today. I've driven a prior Volvo and I just didn't like it. Um, this one though, the VNL 64T, uh, this is a version two. So I don't know if it's the same one, you know, from the same person that modded it that I drove before or not. But if it comes up on a quick job, I will definitely give it a shot. I do have a couple other uh, truck mods here loaded into the game. The Argosy from Freightliner I have as well. The T800 from Kenworth, obviously that's going to be at a Kenworth dealer. So, I've got various different uh, trailer packs, standalones, things like that. I've been testing out a lot of different ones. Some I found work well, others not so much. So, obviously I take those out because I don't like having the cargo list dominated by one type of mod or one type of trailer. And I also don't like seeing the cargo get taken over by the name of the trailer. Yeah, I could go and change the name, but some of these look like they're pretty complex. And uh, like the Phantom flatbed ones, for example, I'd love to have those in here. Those are always great looking flatbeds. The mod looks awesome, but there's like 30 different versions. <laughs> and I'm just not going to take that kind of time to go through each file and uh, change uh, every load or, or whatnot. Um, I'm sure there's an easy way to do it. I, I don't know of it yet. Modding these files is not something I'm used to. So, let's see. I don't see a Volvo showing up. I was actually looking to see if I could drive a Volvo, and I don't even see a T800 showing up. Well, maybe as we go, as I go along here, that'll pop up. But first off, we can probably just take an easy run here, a water trailer, for forty-six hundred dollars compared to twenty-nine hundred. Yeah, I think that's a no-brainer. Now, with this, uh, at the start, money, money is going to be key. Speaking of money, there's another email, and I guarantee you that's a bank. Money is going to be key to start off with, and I'm sorry if I'm making you guys sick. Sometimes I forget I have the uh, head tracker IR system on my hat here. But, uh, so, you know, normally you want to try to find loads that are going to pay off real good, and they're kind of few and far between to start with, mainly because you are starting out. Oof almost into those uh, barrier walls there. Very nice looking trailer, nicely done. 
Maybe a little on the long side. Not quite the trailer you're going to be using for water, but, uh, you know, to each their own. Now, unlike most of the people out there that are playing this game on YouTube that you guys will see, uh, I actually do have experience driving these trucks. The disclaimer I'll go ahead and, and uh, explain right now is, though, I don't have or never have had a Class A CDL, which is what is required to drive these trucks, tractor trailer combinations. Um, I did, uh, until as of last year, have a Class B, which allows me to drive something like that truck that just passed us there. Straight trucks, delivery trucks, things like that. Um, straight, straight dump trucks, things, you know. Um, I could even drive the tractor here, and if I disconnected the trailer, I could drive that. Um, many occasions I have, mainly as shuttle-wise, but, uh, I've driven mo very many variations of, uh, of trucks, from Peterbilt to Mack to Kenworth to International. The only thing I have not driven is a cab over. I've never been in a cab over, nor have I ever driven one, so, uh, not in any hurry to do it, but now that I don't drive anymore, um, I, you know, we can rule that out, but, um, I have pulled trailers before, just keep that on a down low, because it was not legally, but, uh, I have pulled trailers, and mainly as a shuttle from one location to another, uh, but over 15 years behind the wheel, uh, my father is a driver, uh, you know, being in the truck with him growing up, you know, it, it's, it was almost second nature for me, you know, I'm gonna stop, oof, it was almost second nature, um, being behind the wheel, period, but even driving tractor trailer, um, uh, almost felt like I was at home, and why am I sitting here waiting? I'm not in Europe, I can turn on red. So although I'll discuss what's going on and how and why things are happening, uh, you know, I don't want anyone to think that I'm a pro. I don't consider myself a pro, but I do consider myself to be more informed and have more experience than many others who are playing this game, European or American, uh, and think they know what they're talking about, because someone else told them, um, you know, learning from others is one thing, that's fine, but when someone wants to act like they're a professional, uh, like they've done it before, just because Joe Schmo told them, hey, this is how we do this, and this is why we do that, you know, that, that no, that, that doesn't fly. I don't know too many, damn it, I need to work on this clutch. In a real truck, here's an example, the real truck, you let off the clutch a little bit, you're gonna start rolling, even in fourth gear. This one, no, you just stall. also in a real truck when I've got the clutch pulled, pushed in, and even if I am in gear, I hit that accelerator, RPMs are going to go up. Here, they burp up and then they come back down again. So, little nuances here and there that kind of just tweak a little. Nope, I actually don't. Basically two lane here. You can see the you know, parts of concrete there. And this is going to be a one-way road, so I'm going to move over here so people can still 
pull alongside and turn if they need to. It's just common courtesy. If you don't need to take up the whole road, then don't take up the whole road. But this episode here, I'm calling Caskets Playpen. It'll be in the title. And I'm not going to go into too much description as to why I have that name or that title. Come on. Oh, must have missed it. There we go. I'm not going to go into too much detail about Caskets Playpen. It's not something that will be on every, every game. Uh, mainly initial gameplay episode ones will have caskets playpen on it. Um, it goes back to SOCOM 1 on PS2 days. And long story short, it was just basically a gathering room for people as the games progressed into SOCOM 2, SOCOM 3. People saw that name and knew that I was going to attract good gameplay, that I played well and I wasn't someone that's going to glitch and cheat and screw people around, so Caskets Playpen is kind of the same thing, it's just a, uh, you know, laid back and fun, you know, anything goes kind of thing, and future episodes after this one will be under a playlist for American Truck Simulator. Um, playpen episodes will basically be for multiplayer one-time plays, like uh, I might do uh, a playpen on naval action. It's a 1800 um, sailing game. Um, right after America, right after America got its independence, and so you're going out on sailing ships, uh, whether it's a little yacht all the way up to a Constitution class, with you know two or three rows, you know decks of cannons, and. Uh, it, 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 it is a little boring, it is a little tedious until you get into a battle, and the battle is where all the fun is. Uh, pulling up alongside someone and hearing all those cannons go off, it's a trip. And then seeing the smoke and the wood flying, hearing everyone on your, on your boat cheer because you just took down their mast or something. Um, you know, that's, that's the enjoyable part for me. like scales in the real world, and I don't like them still. Scale houses are annoying. They're necessary, but they are annoying. Come on, homie, just stick your nose out there. Sit on. Horn won't do anything. Well, I'm ready just to jump on the damn shoulder and go around him. Nice! Now we're definitely not going to go anywhere. Thirty-four thousand pounds. It's a decent load. The idea for all this right here is to basically get all your speed going into the hill. That's why I wish I could have just came right out of the scale already in seventh grade and just kept on going. Try to get all your momentum going into the hill, so that way you don't wind up doing 20 or 30 when you're near the top. But the Pete was able to motor on up and so. Jake break off, don't really need that. 
But in future episodes here, as the series progresses, I'll discuss things about why we have the hit scales and uh, why you see, in, if you're driving down the highway, you see some trucks drive by, but others have to pull in, things like that. Um, also, one of the mods that's out there right now, which is really annoying to me, um, is why trucks like this one and the equivalent to Kenworth, you will never see, okay, I shouldn't say never, because there will be times where you will, possibly, and if it is, then there's, then there's a problem, but the newer trucks are not like the older ones, because of the emission restrictions that are put on them. So, seeing a mod that says smoke from your from the stacks, that's just outright wrong. Not gonna happen. And <laughs> for me, it's just the whole realism gameplay part. I want to make sure the truck I'm driving sounds and looks and acts just like it would in the real world. Which means it isn't going to be putting out black smoke. Even on these trucks, I mean, normally... If you see black smoke coming out of a truck, there's one of two things. It's either set up that way, and I believe it's running rich, which produces the black soot, the black smoke, or he's, the motor's getting close to detonating. Um, there's, an, there's a motor issue with it. So, in these newer trucks, though, it's not a possibility. It can't, it can't happen. The most you might get is white smoke from my experience and if it's got white smoke then there's an issue with the exhaust and uh, the DEF system or the regen system is burning everything off uh, I'm in fact a, a co-worker of mine him he had a F-250 and he started doing the same thing and it was just nothing but white smoke billowing out the back of it then again he made some modifications to his truck which kind jacked everything up on his regen system and his coder that he was using. Okay, I'm getting over. Screw this guy. I'm probably going to get hit with speeding here, but... I do have a realistic piece finds mod installed. So instead of a thousand dollars, I think it's a hundred and fifty. And, I mean, I wasn't much of a speed demon when I drove, but I also didn't always follow the speed limits. Like, in many areas, regardless of what you're driving, you're probably going to get run over or run into the back of. You know, you can cause an accident or be part of it. You have to go fast in order to stay with traffic. Normally, police will let you go on that, but sometimes you do get that one brick that wants to pull you over for... 57 and a 55 or something. Me? I got pulled over for 61 and a 55. I could have swore I was doing 58, 59, but because I had to stop a quarter mile away. In fact, he, when he pulled around and pulled me over, I finally stopped right there just inside the entrance to the stop I was going to. So he's like, well, where are you going? And I said, well, they're 200 yards over here. Weird. <laughs> what do you mean? That's my stop. That's where I gotta go. But, you know, it's whatever. He was he was fishing, and he needed a reason to pull me over, and that was... That's mainly the reason behind vehicle enforcement police. Trucks, they can make bank major payday because all of the regulations that they have to have, logbooks, uh, as well as um, regulations with the trucks themselves about how you know, brakes can only have a gap of so much, and the tire treads can only be so low. On a car, we can drive our tires until they're bald. On a truck, you can't do that. Screw it, I'm not waiting for this train of idiots. I'm going. You know, and the list goes on and on. So... A lot of you might find this information interesting, others might, eh, don't care, don't need to know it. It's just a game. But, uh, 
my honest opinion, more information about trucks and truck safety and how we should act while on the road around them needs to be taught in driver's ed. And hell, take them, put them in the passenger seat and take them out for a drive. They, you know, people need to fully understand more about semis. Just because they have 18, 18 wheels and the wheels are bigger and the brakes are bigger does not mean they can stop faster. Does not mean they can handle better than your Audi or the same as your Audi. People really need to understand more about trucks and they need to be educated about it otherwise we're still going to continue to have incidents of car versus truck and for the most part truck I still believe is undefeated. Just like car versus train, people still think they can beat the train. The train's still undefeated. Now to help with the realism, eh, that's a Dodge Durango over there. I do like those, those are new ones. They're based off the Jeep Cherokee. Not bad. But uh, to help with the realism in the game here, I have turned braking stability, I believe it was, and the, ch and the trailer or truck stability down to about a quarter. I'm not, I don't plan on rolling over anytime soon, but uh, I didn't want to have the stability where it's at with the braking, where I can stop on a dime. No, so what would be nice if they had locking up the tires, so you had skid marks all over the place. That would be perfect. set in the options to auto select the safe park safe parking spot. I'm not gonna bore you guys with having to maneuver trailers in and around stuff that it could take, you know, ten minutes to do. But there we go. Nice decent trip, two hundred and fifty six miles. Wow. It's always nice when you're it's early on in the game. So, let's see here. Skills. If, for those of you who don't know, you can... Every time you level up, you get to pick a skill. Uh, eventually, all of these will be filled up for you. Once, you know, you reach those levels. Each one has their own different thing here. And as you can see over here on the side, long distance. I can take deliveries up to 400 miles. I get a 5% higher reward for delivery distances longer than 250 and I get 25% more experience bonus for delivery distances longer than 250 miles. High Valley Cargo does the same thing, as well as Fragile just in time. The fuel economy makes your truck more fuel efficient. First one here, rank one, up to 10% of fuel saved when driving with trailer, up to 10% of fuel saved when driving free, and it increases from there. Uh, you got your hazardous cargo up here at the top, so you can handle the things, poison, uh, flammable, flammable gas, explosives, corrosives, things like that. So usually when you're first starting out, you might want to go for the high value cargo. Uh, it does, it, it's a 5% higher reward for uh, high value delivery and 18% more uh, experience points. Um, I mean, if you want more experience points faster, you can always go with fragile. But, uh, you know, money is kind of where you want to be focused. Let's see, does anyone else... Reward. Reward. Just-in-time delivery seems to give maybe the best. 
percent higher reward for finishing an important delivery plus 20 percent more to start off with on the delivery on the experience rank two six percent higher reward three percent increase for finishing an important delivery 10 percent higher reward for finishing an urgent delivery as well as 30 percent experience bonus for finishing an urgent delivery i don't think urgents come up that much so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take flammable as my first one. That's going to open up me hauling gas. Um, gas and diesel tankers. And next time when I level up, I'll start taking the high value cargo. My main goal is to open up some more options here as to what I can haul. Um, fill up that jobs list a little bit more. So let's take a look at the emails. There's the bank. And Walmart wanted me to drive for him. So the bank, 130,000 is what I'm authorized for. But I'm not going to do that just yet. I could right now pick that up and then go get the Peterbilt. But I want to try to get a little bit more money in the bank first. Do a few more quick jobs. And then maybe episode two or three, I'll go ahead and do a bank loan. And then go out and get my own truck. Hopefully... SCS comes out with the their version of the 389 like they've talked about seeing they just came out with W98900 from Kenworth not my type of truck I'm a Peterbilt guy I'd rather have the Peterbilt 389 although they are basically the same truck uh, Peterbilt and uh, Kenworth are the Chevy and GMC of the truck world uh, they're same company um, just different options and different looks but me personally, I'd still rather have the Peterbilt, so hopefully that comes out here soon. I have not heard a word about it, which kind of makes me worry that we're not going to see it anytime soon, but who knows, they could surprise us. So, until then guys, drive safe.